everyone, and let's check out another beautiful chess game by Adolf Anderson. And in this chess game, Anderson has the white pieces, and his opponent is Daniel Harvitz, one of the top contender chess players in his era, one of the most serious opponents of players like Adolf Anderson and Paul Morphy. Daniel Harvitz, as it says, in many resources was not a gentleman. He didn't like to lose any games, he was leaving, he was running away from his opponents when he realized that he was going to lose the game. He was postponing the games all the time. He was pretending sick. Well, at least that's what he did against Paul Morphy. And in here, he is playing against Adolf Anderson. In 1848, in Bruslu, Prussia, old German state. But the game between Anderson and Harwitz was a draw. Both players managed to score 5 points and it was a draw. So anyway, let's check out this game. Adolf Anderson has the white pieces and Harwitz has the black pieces. Anderson starts the game with playing e4, c5, the Sicilian defense, d4. C takes on d4 and knight to f3. What is this move? This is the Morphy Gambit. Paul Morphy was the first player who played this move. And Harvitz is defending the pawn, e5. In the openings, Daniel Harvitz is a pawn now. We have bishop to c4. Of course, if capturing the pawn, what happens then? I hope you can see the move. Then queen to a5, also attacking the knight. c3, then queen takes knight. It's over for white. So Harvitz was a very dangerous player, of course. Capturing the pawn with the knight would be a blunder. Anderson played bishop to c4, knight to c6, knight to g5, attacking on f7, defending with the knight, f4, d6, and Adolf Henderson castled bishop to g4, attacking the queen. Well, in this position, Adolf Henderson played an unbelievable move. He played bishop takes on f7, sacrificing a minor piece. What a move! But Harwitz didn't capture the bishop. He played king to e7, the better move, and still attacking the queen with the bishop. If knight takes on f7, queen takes bishop, and white is doing fine. So after bishop takes on f7, king to e7, still attacking the queen. Anderson is defending the queen, but then he is losing the bishop. Harvis captured the bishop. Knight takes on f7. F takes on e5. Knight takes on e5. C3. D3. H3. Attacking the bishop. Bishop to e6. Bishop to e3. King to d7. Knight to d2. Bishop to e7. And Anderson captured the bishop. Knight takes on e6. King takes knight. And then queen to d1. King to d7. Bishop to d4. Bishop to f6. b4. Knight takes on d4. And c takes on d4. Well, at least white has connected pawns. And white is controlling the center. But still black is a piece up. And it looks like there is no compensation. It looks like black is winning. Knight to c6. And Anderson played queen to g4. That's check. King to c7. But as you can see, black is moving his king a lot. And this is not a good sign for black. Because the king is not looking very safe. After king to c7, Anderson played rook from a to c1. Pinning the knight and threatening to push the pawn. One of these pawns, and then winning the piece. But the bishop comes for the rescue. Bishop takes on d4 by Harwitz. This is check. King to h1, and then unpinning the knight. Knight to b3, attacking the bishop. Bishop to f6. What would you do in this position? Well, Adolf Henderson played another unbelievable move. He played Rook takes on c6, what a move, sacrificing the exchange when he was a piece down. Is this an epic move? 
What a Move by Anderson, B takes on C6 and E5. Adolf Henderson created an awful complex position for Harvitz. After E5, Bishop takes on E5 and Knight to A5 by Adolf Henderson. Attacking on C6, forking the king and the queen. Black has to defend. Black is defending with queen to E8. And now, queen to C4, C5, queen to D5 by Adolf Henderson. What is the threat? The threat is checkmate. Queen to B7. And there is no defense, actually. No sensible defense. Black resigned. Daniel Horwitz resigned. After queen to D5. What an amazing chess game by Adolf Henderson. It looked like he played some careless moves, sacrificing his pieces carelessly. But eventually he has managed to defeat his opponent. Just like Mikhail Talbot do. And let me show you the possible continuation if defending with the queen, then rook to f7, and black is in trouble. If defending the queen again, then rook to b7, and black is getting checkmated. If king to c8, that's the best try. Then queen to b7, and knight to c6, it is over again. Then winning the queen, queen takes on c6, white well, is better. And finally, let me show you this possibility, let's say queen to b5, then rook to f7, and there is no sensible defense. How to stop rook to b7? It is over. Well, this is why, after queen to d5, Daniel Horowitz resigned. An unexpected result, because Anderson was a piece down for a long time. He played like a gambler. It was a risky chess game for white, especially against a very dangerous player like Horvitz. But finally, Anderson managed to defeat Daniel Horvitz in this chess game. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.